dummy in between. <laughs> you know what? The audio just cut into you saying the dummy in between. <laughs> <laughs> so we are going to leave it. I don't care. <laughs> this is what we're rolling with. Uh, welcome to another podcast. Uh, we got uh, some discussions. This is a crazy world, right? We got the pandemic and on top of that now we have riots in the street um you know uh yes wants to acknowledge george floyd yes i just want to acknowledge the whole movement around the country and also around the globe about black lives matter which i think it's it's very important and um to be honest um i didn't know about a lot of stuff and throughout my life i think one thing that helps me to be more familiar with the issues were were films and movies related to racial discrimination and slavery so definitely i can say that movies and media have a huge impact to educate me sometimes in a positive way sometimes in a negative way i'm not saying that every movie and film necessarily gives you like good information or the right amount of information uh but yeah i i still try to educate myself about the movement and i still try to be open-minded and i have to say this i can't tolerate when people use the hashtag all lives matter of course all lives matter but that's not the point sorry i just drop it but um yeah, so today we our discussion is kind of inspired by the current situations and the current movement around the globe and around the country. So, so yeah. we're going to talk mm-hmm. movies that have helped shape, uh, sh- shaped uh, some of our views, just movies we like that are, you know, on uh, on topic uh, today. Unless, Sarah, did you, do you want to start us off with either, you know, your viewpoint on what's going on or like a movie that yeah well like like yasi said um i also can't stand all lives matter um hashtag <laughs> it's a difficult thing <laughs> no 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 it's just, th- it's just that people i just people who s- say that don't see um they, they're not seeing the situation they're not seeing or that they're just people are saying black real- lives matter because black lives are not being what's the word mattered mattered yeah exactly yeah, that's I'm the word talking myself in and you know what it's not <laughs> no but i mean you gotta filter out though there, there are people out there just trying to say shit so yeah they're, yes. so they're there gonna people do who that just trying to draw attention to themselves like seriously you just gotta like for anyone that's like you know like fuck this oh man there's so much to discuss on that uh I think you just have to have a sort of sensitivity to know that like uh, what you're doing by not it's not everyone knows that it's beyond Black Lives Matter. But right now, the focus should be on them, because you know what, Um, from my vantage point, like I think like like now's not the time to bring up your own shit. Like if you're Mm -hmm. Asian, don't talk about fucking your Asian matter shit, you know, Uh, LGBTQ like community like if this black lives matters movement succeeds, then, you know, it's going to help benefit. Um, everyone um, mm-hmm. progress forward. Yeah, I tell. When everyone in society is treated equally, then society functions better as a whole. Right. Yes. Yes. Exactly. I agree with you. And you know, I I saw like a lot of my Persian friends also started like posting um, that how they treated badly because they are from Middle East. So I still appreciate them like speaking up about like because it's at the end of the day it's also a racial discrimination issue if you are like racially um, suppressed or oppressed throughout your life because of your race but I think that at this moment when there is an already a movement going on it's better to shut up and just like listen or incar- like help the current movement flow and not trap not as you say not not try to put on um your also to add your your shit onto that so it's um it's definitely important for people to listen and if they are not willing to help at least shut up so 
Gear That's from me. yeah, she said, shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, that is command. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we are going to talk about movies, though. You know, mm-hmm. like uh, everyone talks about the you have news outlets. So you have other sources where you can educate yourself on the topic. Um, and uh, I'm not claiming to be any experts, but we love movies a lot. So yes. uh, anyone anyone want to talk about one of their movies that they find influential? You want to go first? Sarah, go first. Okay. Um, so this is actually a series, a Netflix series, and I watched it recently because it came out recently. Um, Hollywood. Um, and it's about uh, aspiring actors in L.A. Um, just after World War II, and it's kind of an alternate reimagining of what classic Hollywood movies could have been like if they were inclusive. Um, so... I think the concept is rather interesting um, because the there's you you get introduced to a whole bunch of a cast of characters um, who most of them are from diverse backgrounds. Even though like this show starts off with a stereotypical white farm boy Mm -hmm. wanting to be an actor, Um, but it evolves into like they the show in the show they like make this movie where it's an african-american actress as the heroine and you know there's a whole big thing of like oh the the theaters in the south won't play it and um all these obstacles they come across there's a big emphasis on like racial diversity and also sexual diversity um and i don't know it's it's so it's an inclusive show it's an inclusive show it's kind of like a hopeful reimagining of the past with today's norms yeah, and it's not about only like being inclusive towards like ra- specific race. It's also about like yeah. LGBT community yeah. and like, like different back- back- backgrounds and stuff. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've heard so many good things about uh, that show. I just, um, I just didn't find the time to watch it, but I, this is definitely on my list. Yeah. Yeah, it's an eight episode series, um, so it's not too bad, but. I liked it. I had fun, and it was like it was kind of nice because it was just I don't know. I guess it was rather happy. Mm-hmm. So. so, was there like a moment in that show that uh, specifically like shows like an alternative future for uh, African American actors or actress in the um, Hollywood? How like spoilery are we getting? I think. A healthy dose of spoiler would okay. be fine. Okay. Oh no, I haven't seen it. Oh, okay. I don't want to like. I don't want to spoil things because <laughs> I, I have an no, answer. No, go ahead. But... Go go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. It's fine. Okay. So like 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 I said before, um, like in the in the film, um, the actors and the filmmakers and the writers, um make this movie with an African-American actress as the heroine, and it's a screenplay by an African-American man. Um, and they, like, they produce it and stuff, and it eventually does get shown um, in theaters, and they have this, like, montage of, like, people watching across the nation mm-hmm. and, like, the effect it has of, like... Because um, the the woman who started it was like oh well if i had seen someone who looked like me on the big screen when i was a little girl would have made all the difference Mm -hmm. and you just show all these like households um and like when they you know show the oscars and they're like oh we're getting the recognition we deserve Mm -hmm. yeah nice nice Mm -hmm. nice so it's not totally like an alternative future. It's just like it well, is alter- something. It al- is alternate past. Al- it's alternate past. Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay, sorry, I missed that part. Yeah, yeah interesting. It's, yeah, it's like n- late 1940s, early 1950s, I think. Um, ah. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Okay. Yeah. You know what? I said. I said that right. Post. post yeah. Probably. Prob- yeah. Probably. I, I. I just like my mind wasn't working right. Yeah, you know what they, as they said, an alternative past can lead to an alternative future. So that's yeah, what so my that mind. And, yeah, that, yeah. I think that's true because if you look at the. What are you guys talking about? 
Time travel? Time Did travel. someone kill baby Hitler to avoid all of this? Not yet. No? Okay. <laughs> Sadly. Sorry, yeah. go on. You guys are trying to be serious. No, we were ta- just talking about, yeah, definitely an alternative past can lead to an alternative future, which in this case, like if somewhere in the past, like things would have been done differently, we might not seen today's like violation against like african american mm-hmm, exactly. we might not see um like riots going on on the street but you know i'm really glad that if the discussion is open i'm started i'm just really glad that it's happening now not later you know but i hope that it lead to a constructive thing but anyway mm-hmm. so mike huh should uh, we should we switch to the next person's like favorite movies? Well, you got a, a few other movies, right, Sarah? Oh, is it one person discussing? Am I, it? Am I talking about all of them right now? Well, because I have the uh, for those that don't know, I'm trying to be Jamie over here, Jamie from the Joe <laughs> Rogan <laughs> show. So I'm trying to operate <laughs> these slideshows, and there, <laughs> I thought we had something going on, <laughs> and it's not. Uh, I can't jump around. I had everyone's oh, files ordered by. Oh, okay. So okay. you know what? We are not. Going no, to it's make okay. It- it's okay. I, Jamie, you're good, but I could do this. So no, no, it's fine. We will, no. we, we will be like you know easy on our our own Jamie, which is Mike. No, I have a name. It's Mike. No, you're Jamie now. All right, Sarah. Uh, which movie do you want me to load up for you? Okay. Um, I guess talk about Django. Ah, that was my favorite, one of my favorite movies. But since you 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 chose that to talk about it, yeah. Um, were, were you planning to talk about Django? No, I just want to like have a wonderful conversation <laughs> uh, about it with you. Okay. Yeah. Well, so I'll t- give a little plot mm. intro. Um, so Django Unchained, a Quentin Tarantino movie. Um takes place in 1858 um and it's a movie about slavery and in the south and there's this um german bounty hunter guy who acquires this one slave called Django. christoph um, waltz christoph (gasps) right waltz Django is jaime fox Uh yeah and um so christoph Watts and Jamie Foxx like team up to be to like uh, be bounty hunters for wanted criminals in the South. And Christoph Waltz isn't into the whole slavery thing. He's German. He's like the Americans are weird. <laughs> um, and then it, and then it like takes a turn into uh, Jamie Foxx wants to go rescue his wife from this plantation, and so then it turns into like kind of a more revenge story and like rescuing, um, yeah. yeah, rescuing his wife. Yeah, I I I remember that movie, and of course I enjoyed like all the blood. Queen yes. Tarantino, you did the whole Tarantino style. Yeah, you did it again. It was just like Very fun to watch um, the shooting and killing, especially the final scenes of that movie was like very very fun to watch but yeah that movie also like had like some interesting uh, like I don't know interesting insights for me like for example if you remember there was a servant that was a servant of uh, Leo DiCaprio who was a slave yeah. owner and I don't Samuel L. Jackson. Samuel Jackson. Oh, come on! <laughs> My mind just went completely blank. I forgot yes. who I am. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, he was Samuel like Jackson. he was like for me. It was the first time that I was um, like being introduced to a character, like a slave character, who is in favor of uh, slavery. Well, yeah, Anna. He, he was like a set. He was like an over the top. Um, like satire character who was like Uncle Tom. Mm-hmm. Yes. And uncle. Yeah. So, but after I did some research, I realized that oh, actually there were also people like that. Yeah. Or also, um, there were even like um, 
documented uh, stories about people i mean um, slave people who were actually helping the whole uh, uh slavery things going on um for for more years because uh, that was the way it is and obviously those people you can't blame those people uh, to a certain um, level but uh, yeah they the whole oppression made them this way that they didn't see the the possibility of being free so i think they just well then people want to like survive as best they can yes on their own. and also they enjoyed the um they the power they have even in this age as a sa- as a slave so if the samuel l jackson character was enjoying this closeness with lou dicaprio he didn't care about um like the whole idea of, of like setting other slaves free because then he will then he would lose his benefits of like being on a higher yeah, position he has more power than um the others yes mm-hmm. Do you have anything, any thoughts on that movie? Yeah, I like Leo. He's good in Titanic. <laughs> That's my thoughts. Yeah, great. We all love Leo. <laughs> uh, yeah, no. I, Samuel L. Jackson's performance was just so standout Amazing. to me. Amazing. Yeah, super yeah. cool. Um, okay. Yaz, uh, should we continue on with Dear White People from Sarah? Sure. Yeah. I haven't watched that movie, but it's a what is so it? it's a movie I have and no idea it's what's going on. a series. I haven't watched the movie. I've only watched the Netflix series. Oh, uh, I see. Uh, you guys can't see it. I don't, I, I haven't set up the monitor um, for these folks. I don't know why I'm pointing because we're on the slideshow right now, but they can't see the slideshow. I was going to say that it uh, looks like a huge mix of people. Yeah, so it's kind of a large cast, um, and like the setting is a fictional Ivy League college, um, and the main characters are all uh, students of color at this predominantly white university, um, and I feel like it captures the college social justice experience pretty well. Um, but so, like, the main character, she has this radio show called Dear White People. Ah. Where she um, talks about, like... Her experience. Racism and cultural bias and, like, student of color's experience. Um, yeah, and it's kind of... It's like a, it's a show... Um, it's, like, it's a satire. Um, and it's also kind of like a college sitcom. Um there's lots of like humor um but then like the, you know the show starts off with um like there's a group of students who are at the college who are having a blackface party oh. and then um some of the main characters show up at the party and like police show up and things escalates and it's been out of control but now there are th- like three seasons so the plot um just kind of follows the characters in their lives at um this school okay since you have a dummy in person Mm -hmm. and since i didn't actually go to college here in the u.s i Mm -hmm. i don't know if black uh face party are like actually a thing among college students or is it what was it not in my experience okay it's so weird that they pop up though like kevin trudeau right Mm -hmm. well he was what was he brown face or something yeah i think so yeah same you know what's so funny about that is like the outrage but one guy's untouchable and that's robert downey jr who did it for the entire film of tropic thunder oh, yeah. <laughs> but he oh. but he gets a pass you know because he's iron man because <laughs> he's iron man without him there are no there is no marvel universe as we know it but i do think there was um an incident at my college where um this the school found a photo someone posted on social media of these two girls wearing blackface for a costume oh, man. and i think i don't know what happened to them but i remember there was a huge uproar yes um yeah because making this your is... face black back in iran it doesn't have any like racism connotation i mean related to slavery or african-american um, what are they, what are they like context? either a mechanic or a military guy no, actually, camouflage actually so there is this character 
um, that appears near our like New Year. And uh, that character has a black face. It's just like our own Santa Claus, or let's say it's it's not. Cheaper Gian- Santa Claus is in blackface. Yes. <laughs> oh man! Really? It's it, it, so that character wears red. I'm and it's just Santa images <laughs> in my head right now. And that character like sings and appears on the street, and it has a black face, but. So is he a black all over, or is it just a black face? I don't know. I usually people yeah, like mix their face Because if black. he's black all over, then maybe he's just black. Yeah. <laughs> no. So people usually mix their face a black to be representative of that character, but um, that character has nothing to do with the uh, like. At least to, in my previous research, has nothing to do with like um, African um, heritage or. I mean anything related to African slavery history so that character is supposed to be like um, the the person who is protecting earth from evils or devils so but it has a black face so and it's Haji Firuz Haji Firuz Haji Firuz yes so that's a sign of like uh, our new year and usually people during um, year are New Year, make, they are making their faces black and they appear on the streets and they are dancing and they are trying to collect money. So it's a, it has a different thing, but it, has a, it doesn't have any uh, meaning. But I am hopeful that for my Persian friends who are living in the U.S., they don't decide to go Haji Firuz. Uh, during Halloween. <laughs> during like, ha- hey, I'm not racist. I'm just Haji Firuz. <laughs> yes. Oh yes. yes. Haji, you don't know? Oh. <laughs> Oh, no. All right. Well, what about you, Yaz? Can you give us some of your influential movies? Yes. Like, I'm curious to see what your taste's like. So, the movies that I have chosen for today are kind of the movies that I have been watched from, like, years ago. Like, from when I was a teenager or still in uh, middle school to very recent movies. But I will start from the most recent one which is uh, the movie Green Book. Uh, it's a movie starring uh, Viggo Mortensen, uh, my favorite character from Lord of the Rings, and Mahershala Ali. How do you pronounce his name? Mr. Ali. Mr. Ali. Okay, so Mr. Ali. And it's the movie... So the story is about uh, a real character... Don Shirley, he was a very genius pianist, African-American pianist and musician. And back in 1962, he was giving a tour in deep southern, Amer- deep south uh, uh, estates. And uh, he was going on a tour, but he need, because he needed protection, he hired a bouncer guy um, who has like this like, mafia not mafia but he was uh he Ita- looks like he would be in the mafia <laughs> yeah because he has like a italian american heritage and that character names is tony i don't remember his last name because his last name was kind of hard to pronounce even for uh people in the movie so tony was this like italian bouncer guy and also chauffeur for um, mr ali character and they were driving from starting from i think ohio somewhere from starting from new york and they went on a road trip and uh so this movie is about these two characters forming a relationship and also it's also showing the ongoing racism issue because for those who don't know green book uh, was actually a title of a real um Ha- manual or hand uh, handbook guide for travelers uh, for African travelers uh, back in uh, 40s and uh, traveling while black yeah traveling while black so I didn't know this but yeah black people weren't allowed to stay in specific hotels or bars it's or like the Michelin guide for yeah for this fucked up thing for yeah. safety <laughs> For safety reasons, because if they didn't 
pay attention, they could be beat up. Or they could be harassed, or they could be even killed, which is like very really insane. Because I thought that after slavery, and that sucks to hear. Like the stories that come up on the news of like, you know, parents uh, talking about like having to teach their kids, you know, how to survive a police encounter. Um, mm-hmm. And yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think it's exactly the same. The current version of uh, the Green Book, you know. Yeah, having a manual for avoid for avoiding like police violence it's just like i don't know insane it's just like the current version of green book but anyway green book uh is mainly like a road trip movie and you will see um that the two main characters uh tony and don shirley character are developing uh this bond despite uh this bond together despite of the fact that in the beginning you would see they are coming from very different places like in the beginning of the movie you will see uh, Viggo Mortensen uh, character I mean Tony character he broke some like glasses because some um, black construction worker at his house uh, drank water from it and it was a shocking thing but throughout the movie you will see as um, Tony develops this bond with Don Shirley he's also kind of changing and now because of their exchange of like thoughts and also the fact that um, Don was helping Tony to write letters to his wife Mm -hmm. uh, he's now changing his uh, viewpoints of uh, like black people so it was good for him also he the whole trip was changing him uh, also as a person and I like the the part that uh, Don character was helping uh, uh, Tony to write those letters to yeah because he was like your letters are pretty awful like you want to write romantic stuff that you'll, your wife will like so he helped him be more eloquent in his letters yes yeah and um, the other there was also a scene in the movie um that was very striking to me and it was more towards the end of the movie it was a restaurant scene and uh don shirley is supposed to play piano for like this whole uh audience for their new year eve celebration or something like that but those same people the white people that they were willing to pay and watch him playing piano for them they were unwilling to accept him to dine at the same place as them and it was just kind of crazy and i couldn't like yeah because it's fine for him to be the entertainment but not for him to mix with them yeah it was just like very uh insane when you when when you now like look it um from the perspective but yeah back then who knows what those people uh think really because to us when we are now watching it seems like so clear that why they don't let him to sit and dine with them what's wrong with it but back then they were like so strict with that uh, with the fact that uh, Don Shirley quitted the whole uh, gig and they decided to play in the African American uh, basically a black cafe for African American people and it was way more fun Mm -hmm. so it was a heartwarming movie. Uh, still, a lot of people might think that it has the the white savior material because Don Shirley character was like uh, in different like um, in different like uh, scenes were protected was protected by Tony character. Well, he hired Tony to be like the muscle. Yeah, but it was also yeah. So I agree that it wasn't the regular white savior. Uh, thing because it was the purpose of the movie that Don uh, just hired him to be his bodyguard so what you would expect uh, from like a bodyguard to do you have you you would expect them to you know protect you so yeah (laughs) they definitely focused on um, the journey of Tony um, coming to like accept his um, racism and then not being racist yeah 
Yeah, I think that scene belongs to one of the uh, performance, and this is the per- the restaurant scene specifically that they didn't. Uh, the restaurant owner uh, refused him to uh, eat and dine in. Yeah. So the other movie that uh, I wanna uh, talk about is the movie called Marshall. So Marshall uh, is. Uh, is a kind of like a biographical uh, movie about Sir Good Marshall, the first African American Supreme Court judge or justice, and um, it, it's also kind of like an interesting uh, movie uh, because it uh, it's a story. Uh, it covers a story uh, from one of the cases from one of the cases uh, that. Uh, Marshall uh, did while he was like still a lawyer and in that movie you will also see a black uh, man accused of something that he didn't do and uh, there were a lot of like a negativity and stigma around it but Marshall character helped him uh, to basically uh, you know to, to basically like uh, found the justice and they proved that the, the character is not guilty and uh, it has like also some like uh, empowering moments about like African Americans in it I like uh, Marshall's character a lot but the uh, one of the things that I it was educating for me was that I didn't know that back in like 60s there were like separate fa- water fountains for uh, African American, so mm-hmm. they didn't let like African American uh, to drink from uh, from like a certain like or a, let's say white people's like water fountain, and it was just like very uh, unbelievable for me. But you know, I'm still learning the details. So when I say that I choose these movies because they were like educational for me. They are education. Please, it's a disclaimer that I will put out there. It's educational for me as a person who grew up in Middle East and not necess- and I don't necessarily have like the information or back knowledge about a lot of like racism issues that like a regular American might have. And yeah, you don't need to apologize. Or- yes, yeah. because I when I was like reading about like um, some of the movies that I chose, I also found a lot of like like um black people found them like not reflective of reality like for example the movie green book it just like got so many criticism because of like did get a lot of criticism yeah did, um, a lot of criticism for not reflecting the reality but oh i thought because you because vigo said some racist stuff <laughs> Well, then I feel like Django should get the most criticism because they just throw the N word around like it's. No, yeah. like in real life. Like, as, oh, yeah. Oh, in real life. Yeah, I thought that that was part of the backlash. That was part of the backlash. The other part was like that the Don Shirley real family. They said that, oh, it's not the case. The relationship of Don and Tony wasn't like that. So a lot of like things are fabricated. And mm. also, a lot of people. I've read that recently that think that these movies are helping to soften the heart to soften the face of um, harsh reality that black people faced back in like 1960s because at the end of the day when you watch Green Book it's a heartwarming movie you will see that oh a white person all of a sudden changed because of a course of a white um, road trip and now is willing to accept like an african-american guy in his house but it wasn't the reality of uh, that era and a lot of people believe that these movies are like sugar coating um like a period of history but still i'm saying that at the end of the day for someone like me um it shows like those little like tiny sharp pieces of like racism that um still like able to cut through your skins and like make you bleed to death you know what i mean Hmm. so they still shows like harsh enough harsh like detail details that someone like me will will be like wait what 
they cannot drink from a water, same water fountain? What? And I feel like any, I feel like most films and like media about um, something in history or about something in the past always have some element of today's norms. Mm-hmm. Um, so because it's being made for audiences today. So oh, sorry. I think that just makes sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Have you watched Green Book? Mm-mm. I thought we were talking about Marshall. No, yeah, we were talking about Marshall, but um, I just like um, back to Green Book because um, I was talking about the details that I found similar. Um, like the fountain thing was, I saw that in Marshall, but those details I also saw like in uh, the movie Green Book. But yeah, so the movie Marshall was also f- filled with like de- details and you would see that a character even as like, strong as um fair good marshall as this like powerful lawyer was still facing um a lot of uh, discrimination because of his race or people even like police or like people from judicial system i don't system. understand though like he's the king of wakanda he can do whatever he wants like why does he want that job yeah i watched marshall before i realized that he was the king of wakanda (laughs) so back then it was a touching like um touching movie and i like i I like that movie i would recommend it to uh, people to watch uh, because it's also entertaining you know i don't want to spoil the story because it's a murder it's a murder case not a murder case it's like a kind of like a rape case but because the person who committed that is like an african-american guy so basically back then the um the penalty for like african guy for for like a black guy to commit like rape was um execution by electric chair or something like that yeah, death penalty yeah it has death pen- penalty because he he was uh, accused of raping a white woman so uh so yeah the whole story uh still it, it's an engaging story especially the way they solve the problem but yeah it's uh, i would recommend that but it's filled again with details of like minor uh or major forms of racism. How did they solve the problem? Did they like bust out a glove that didn't fit? <laughs> you know, I will leave it to your imagination until you decide mm-hmm. to watch it. But it's a good movie. It's a good, good movie. If you like King of Wakanda, you would see a different uh, play from him. And uh, also the other character that I really like in that movie was like, um, I forgot his name, but do you remember... Uh, that's um okay who who was the snowman in like ice um i'm so terrible chris hemsworth (laughs) not not chris hemsworth um josh josh something so in he play uh, he played in um he played the voice of that uh, snowman give me the movie or the in frozen all right oh he played olaf olaf yeah he played olaf voice Josh, um, he also played. Okay, so in that Josh one, Glad. Josh, Josh Glad. Frozen Olaf. Actor, riveting television. <laughs> as you see us look on our devices, <laughs> for Olaf. Okay, Josh Gad. Josh God. That character. Did I say Gad? Did you say Glad? Right? Did I say glad? You did say glad. Oh, man. It was close. So Josh Gad... Close with no cigar. So Josh Gad was also playing, helping um, Marshall character uh, to solve the case. And he was a Jewish person. So you would see also in movie Marshall that there were a lot of like prejudices in regards to Jewish people on Jewish lawyers. And... Um, so it was interesting to watch. So should I talk about my other movie now? Yeah, which one was that again? Uh, Crash. Crash. Ryan yeah. Felipe? Was it Ryan Felipe? One of them. 
Once again, riveting television. Yeah. yeah. No this is a. Uh, this is like a. Paul ha- Haggis was the director. Oh, he's and good. Starring, I don't see right. There, well, there's a bunch of people: Sandra yeah. Bullock, Don Cheadle, Matt Dillon, yes. Jennifer Espinito, Terrence Howard. I mean. <laughs> so. I remember, so I haven't watched it in years. Like, probably I watched it around the time that it came. Sorry, I, did I interrupt you? No. Okay. So uh, I watched it uh, around, like, the time that it came out, which was, like, early 2000. I think the movie came in 2004 or something like that. So it was the first movie that I remember clearly for the first time, like, kind of was like an informational thing for me to know about racism and um, racism especially the uh, brutality that people might receive black people might receive from police in America in the US so the reason that I brought up Crash was not necessarily because that it is something that again I watched recently or I have all the details on top of my mind but I just wanted to say that oh some of these movies they have the impact the movies have the impact to to you know turn on the light bulb in someone's mind if that person is a, a girl grew up and raised in Middle Eastern in a Middle Eastern country to know about like uh, black people issues in America so that was uh, the movie that uh, that for the first time I knew uh, police can be uh, have a uh, that police force can have a lot of like discrimination when it comes to um, treating uh, white people versus black people so Mm -hmm. that uh, that's why I brought it up Um, I don't have the specifications of that movie in my in my mind, but I remember clearly one character, which was, uh, I think it was uh, Bob Dylan, Matt Dylan. M- Matt Dylan. Uh, yeah, Matt Dylan character that you would see in the beginning of the movie that it was he was like basically harassing a African American couple because they were wealthy and the husband was driving a fancy car so it was so Matt Dillon just like allowed himself as a police officer to uh, harass his uh, the African American guy's wife in front of him and his partner was basically doing nothing and it was the movie that it has like that aha moment for like a young person uh, like me to know that oh wow these things are happening in us so yeah so that was uh my experience with the uh, movie crash and yeah i think these are the movies that had like some impacts on me nice very cool good selection crash won a bunch of awards too didn't it yeah i, I think that uh it won uh best picture oscar and it won the best um Something that was a bit of a, of a controversy. Controversy, yeah. You know why? Because back then in 2004, 2005, I think Brokeback Mountain was one of the main... Um, Ang Lee? Yeah. Heath Ledger? Was yeah. it Ang Lee? I think so. Yeah, it was... Heath Ledger and Jake Gyllenhaal. Yes. Smelling the coat. So a lot of people believe that still... Uh, Brokeback Mountain should win the Oscar. I recently read that uh, Crash was one of the worst uh, movies that ever received uh, the Oscar. Haters. But you know, I I still like that movie and I remember it has the impact. You know, it, it was the movie that still has the impact on me sitting here 16 years afterwards or 15 years afterwards and watching it. So it, w- it definitely had that impact. And I remember... It was not only talking about like African American issues, but also about the whole racial discrimination. Because if I am not wrong, there was even an Iranian daughter and fa- uh, father, father and daughter, in the movie Crash. So 
Mm. Yeah, so it it, it covers so the crash uh, basically covers different subsources. Yeah. So it was an inclusive movie about racial like clash within the modern America. But it's yeah, very modern. They had Fanny Newton in there, and no one knows what she is. You know, I was so surprised when I knew that she's in it because now thanks to westward i know who she is but back then i'd have no idea yeah she was in let's see she was also in a movie called shade i think mm. i believe with sylvester stallone mm. uh gabriel byrne jamie fox mm -hmm. uh oh, what random useless information that i wish didn't exist in my head but information like Oh, a bill is due, like, stays in my head. Wait, did you recall that from the top of your head? It looked like you were reading that. <laughs> no, that was a recall. No, no, no. He's, I'm, seeing wow. his, I'm seeing his screen. He's just, like, sh watching us. <laughs> so he's not cheating. He has all this informa interesting information. Meanwhile, I'm sure I have, like, three payments overdue. Yeah, that can happen. That can happen sometimes. No, no, no. All right. Cool. Any other uh, movies you guys want to talk about? You, I think you, it's your turn. Oh, now. you guys are interested in me? Yeah, Is it me time? time? Me, 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 me? Because I'm also interested in the movies you chose to talk about. Oh. Well, it was weird when I sat down and think about, okay, so I guess the, 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 gen, the broad view genesis of what we were going to discuss today is movies that influence us that are you know, pertinent to what's happening today. And I didn't know like how to uh, approach it. So I started thinking about, well, what movies, because I believe it's like, seriously, I think it's too late. Like, don't try and change people's minds if they're over like, you know, 25 or 30. I don't know what age, but just give up on them. Right. And so how are we going to like all these problems today? It just seems like it just sounds like Band-Aids. Just like, okay, more legislation, you know, and then, you know, there's so many entities involved, like unions and stuff. It's just so messy and complicated. But like, what's the root cause of this problem? Where did it stem from? Right. And mm -hmm. I think it starts uh, in, in the beginning, you know, when mm -hmm. people constantly like are reminded of the differences. So this is not like a unique idea for me. But I also just like started thinking about this Joe Rogan podcast where uh, there was this like black... Um, um, what was he? He like converted KKK members and he had this like uh, thought provoking uh, s suggestion to me, which was uh, look, they need to cancel Black History Month. Right. Because I think that all that does is just draws attention to the difference. Right. Mm -hmm. I think he had other reasons, uh, but we both agree that in replacement of that, it should just be part of the curriculum throughout the year. No difference. It's just, hey, during this time, this happened, this person, you know, just matter of fact. You know, they're a part of this like country's rich history and just tell it like it is. Don't separate them by giving them the shortest month of the year. Um, yeah. So I started thinking about, well, you know what, if it really just starts like w the root of it, if I had a kid and uh, as far as I know, I don't uh, the movies well, like what movies would I want to like play for um, for he or she? So one of the movies that touched me was uh, Remember the Titans. And this movie selection for me was just more of the feel. You know, there is an opportunity for uh, the African-American uh, students uh, and the uh, white, uh, um, the Caucasian students, football players specifically, um, to discover, although it being forced to discover that, oh, wow, they're way more similar. We're way more similar than we gave each you know each other credit for um so that was like a great message that i would want to impart is like look for the similarities um uh, i also thought of black panther for the reason of um i love that it's not really addressed and there's no need to this is a powerful black man these are powerful black women here are some more powerful black people and there was no it's just like a good a good showcase you know of of people without sort of like dealing with the conflict or the blaming it's just like these these people are cool and i think you show black panther i'm sure generations from now you know we, we have more movies like black panther uh you know we're going to stop thinking about our differences and think about how how we're all cool 
like how each other is so cool in their own like different and unique ways mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. um and then the third uh and the last mo or, or show actually was uh just how this was less so what i would want to show for my kid but more so of how eerie is this? And this was uh, the show Watchmen. I don't know if you guys have seen the series, but it's just scary. I'm gonna pull up images and Yaz, I think you can see this. Um, but basically, uh, I don't know if you know the, the comic book or the graphic novel of Watchmen. Wait a minute, wasn't it like a scary movie? It was, it was like a superhero movie directed by Zack Snyder, but... Yeah. Um, Damon uh, Lindelof uh, um, created this show and expanded upon the universe. Oh. And look at this. This was a world. This was pre-coronavirus. <laughs> and yet people are all in masks. This guy, uh, this is uh, Hooded Justice, uh, who's an African-American person. But, you know, it's just very pertinent and symbolic because there's this secret group of, uh, you know, like white nationalists that want to like, mm. you know, that they're, it's still racist. This, this, I believe, takes place. At, well, it's an alternate universe, so who cares? But look at everyone's in masks, huge racism going on. But it's a, a wrapped up in this like tidy comic book, uh, you know scenario but it's just so eerie because think about like what had to happen like the mm -hmm. pandemic to the masks right led <laughs> to the masks um the death of george george floyd you know led to outrage masks and outrage you know lead to these like people who try and take advantage of the situation and riot you know mm -hmm. and so we're living in this crazy world where buildings are burning people are dying Mm -hmm. you know but like that the that like confluences of situations it was just so weird that like less than a year ago this dude released a you know show where they had a bunch of like mm -hmm. no pandemic stuff but everyone was in masks yeah yeah it covers so both pandemic and racism in one shot basically it's just weird <laughs> you know <laughs> it's just, just weird but yeah i didn't uh sorry i didn't get that <laughs> but yeah so uh if anyone hasn't seen the uh the television series i think it's like a 10 parter of uh watchmen uh it's just kind of uh relevant and pertinent but my preference would be you know to share with people you know some movies that don't like highlight the uh the the differences the divide it's like all it's all, like from the moment we're born we're set into this like competitive environment where classes you know you it's a a and by the way you know these people are different because you know you just are and then you see these you know you turn on the news and then there's oh they're they're protesting because they're different they want you know so i just think like it's too late we're too far down the timeline start like concentrating on what we can do to uh you know educate and like promote an environment in the future where it's not the differences mm -hmm. that were that are highlighted the incentive is not uh to 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 win because if the incentive is to win then the byproduct is someone has to lose mm -hmm. yes, right very you know? great point so you know as this continues unfortunately uh i don't uh i don't see substantive changes maybe some nice band-aids for now but uh uh, yeah, so remember the Titans for me and uh, and Black Panther. I, I watched Remember the Titans a lot growing up because it was always playing on TV. Aww. Do you remember that this one scene? It all it still gets me. I've seen it like I don't know, like maybe fifteen, sixteen times, and every time when they go right side, <laughs> left side. Oh. <laughs> So great. I, know, I, I guess I really like the locker scene where they were telling the Yo Mama jokes. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. I think it's just cool. hilarious. I should have watched this movie. I think I was drawn to it when I was younger because I was like, oh, this is like really great friendship. Because mm -hmm. um, I don't know, it's, it's really cool to watch how it's like everyone's like glaring daggers at each other at the beginning, but by the end, they're like family. That's nice. That's oh. nice. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. and they had that kinship, right? Because, mm -hmm. and, and that's the thing, when you don't know any better, right? You see on the news, okay, like, okay, you know, this person looks like me, you know, maybe it goes more complicated than that. But what I'm reminded of when you said that was they it, they stayed that way when they went back to school where it was still like divided. Yeah, you know, back into that their their bond on the football field superseded, you know, the 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 chaos that surrounded them where they should be pitted against each other. You know, mm -hmm. so if we can create like a larger a larger tribe. I mean, I'm serious. Uh, okay, I'm half kidding, but I'm half serious. Like, we got bigger shit to worry about, okay? Like a fucking asteroid or fucking aliens or some shit. So we are so divided, we don't stand a chance. But maybe together we can, you know, like fucking support Elon Musk, maybe get us to another planet. So when the asteroid does hit, we're not like all gone. Because that would suck. Because, you know, humans, however flawed we may have been, uh, have done some kind of cool things and it would suck for us to just all disappear, you know? So, uh, yeah, everything's wiped out. <laughs> so, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. In any event, like I, I don't want to, I mean, all these, all these differences are just stupid. Yeah, and I, I mean, I, I like, as you, um, it's, it's really important what kids hear and see, um, mm -hmm. cause they, that's the way you change norms. Is. Yeah, dude. So I think I might have said this once uh, to you guys, but this was also part of the thought process and how, how I arrived. I'm so sorry. I just don't want to lose the thought. Remember there in the news, there was uh, there was a kid that uh, um, the mother like had a, uh, like the kid insisted on getting a haircut. So his mother took him because he thought that this haircut he, they could okay so his best friend is an african-american person oh, and the kid is caucasian and he insisted on a haircut so he could look like his best african-american friend and trick their teachers yeah. you know so you know <laughs> like there was no like he was so young and and raised in an environment where there was no difference between the two vice versa mm -hmm. yes you know that no i'm yeah i'm sorry Sarah. no actually that was great um I actually looked at the, um, I remember when you first told me about uh, the kid and it was heartwarming to hear that stories and mm -hmm. I think, yeah, kids, kids don't know anything about politics. They don't have any experience of like, if there, there should be a gang or if should, if there should be like two groups. Uh, you know against each other they just see themselves as like human beings and as friends so yeah. the color of skin is the least important thing in the minds of like a five or four years old so it's it was a good story to mention uh every time you mention yeah, it my heart <laughs> my heart is like Ooh, so cute. <laughs> yeah definitely we need more stories like that, you know? I don't know about you guys, but uh, fuck, it's so it's so hard to like hear this stuff on the news. Mm -hmm. It's just, uh, it's too depressing. But hey, look, another day alive is another day we have a chance to blah, blah, something, something. Yep. Yep, well so, said. <laughs> <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> Yeah, Great. don't this take things for granted. <laughs> you guys want to talk any more movies? Should we wrap this uh, uh, this puppy up? Um, yeah, I think that we covered enough, uh, and uh, I hope that you know. I mean, what do you guys think is going to happen? Like, what do you think? What do you think is going to happen from the like, pot results of? Wait. Yeah, where is this going? What's the world going to look like in six months? Are we all going to uh, hold hands and sing Kumbaya? Who knows? I feel like that's a no. Will we even touch hands anymore? <laughs> no more. Actually. No more physical touching. <laughs> no more physical touching. That would be scary, but I don't know. For some reason, I feel oh, like... I'm okay with not shaking people's hands. Yeah. And I'm okay with staying at home and working from home as long as my husband can go and work in the office bastard i don't have a husband or a wife <laughs> damn it i'm the only one that finds that funny yeah. go yes. ahead no, I, you, you, I, you, know, you know what i don't want to be offensive so <laughs> yes he's the only lucky one here <laughs> you know what when, when you leave with your spouse or your significant other 
sig- your significant other 24/7, you would just get tired and you just want to like run. That's why I think that my husband's run in the evening is getting longer and longer. <laughs> I mean, he goes for a short walk at the beach. He he told me that like months ago that he would go for like a 15 minutes walk and it was really 15 minutes but now when he says that oh i will go for a run it will last at least an hour and the weather is warmer so i can't do the math in my mind so either he needs more time he wants to exercise he wants to exercise but also i think that the more time you spend together you want more of like your alone I'll tell you space. what he's at a bar with me complaining about you <laughs> I'm too glad that bars are not open still to that level so yeah uh, I think that yeah it's important for people to take their like their own time seriously like everyone needs some like me me time you know or alone time to reflect and just to be like no everyone has lots of people have more time currently because mm-hmm. of the pandemic which yeah. is why I think more people are protesting than they would have been able to yeah and don't get me wrong I, I hope things will change mm-hmm. the, these like you know it in reality they are going to be band-aids but they're going to be very band-aids are very fucking useful alright so mm-hmm. don't shit on me too much out there you know so uh, but I mean because the wealth inequality is a huge mm-hmm. thing you were talking about well people have time well fuck some people just they don't have the time true. <laughs> yes, you that's know true. so uh, I don't know <sighs> Yeah, so actually, the maintenance guy in our building, he was an African-American uh, guy, and he told me that, oh, he really wanted to... Uh, so the other day was like a peaceful protest going on near the place that we live, and he told me that he really wanted to go there, but he had to work that day, mm-hmm. and uh, he couldn't. So, you know, that's true, that's true. So yeah. a lot of people don't have even time... <laughs> To if they if they even want to be part of a movement, they don't have the time because they they have to like work and they have to pay bills and they have to deal with a lot of other shits in their life. Yeah. Andrew Yang, Andrew Yang said all of this shit. We missed out, people. We missed out we on really the Andrew. Did. But yeah, I mean, well, like, what did what did he say about like uh, about the um about the wealth gap and the incentives and the data points you know so we think about all the money we lose in like mental health and things like that we don't take into account mothers and the job they do raising their kids and mm-hmm. the gross domestic product right yeah. so i think he proposed getting those data points right like a way to like measure out to include you know these people like the you know like the maintenance person that you know Mm -hmm. but what can we do with those data points you know how can we tie that to an incentive um you know so instead of like looking at instead of looking at the incentive of like you know meeting a sort of like sales goal if the measurement isn't the the dollar amount but the measurement is tied into the health of like the surrounding area of the business. I don't know how to do this. There are way smarter people. I'm just like randomly like l- like half randomly thinking about this half. I think I read it in a book somewhere. Um, but if you tie that incentive structure to uh, like like, OK, like teachers. Right. So instead of like this arbitrary test score or anything like that, how about we map out not just for that year? How don't we tie their incentive to these kids you know as they progress i guess Mm -hmm. you know and i don't i you know i don't know how to do that because eventually there's this you know bottleneck and then you get stuck in this you know wrongfully structured incentive you know with these institutional like so i think to fix wealth inequality and to fix income gap we have to like completely restructure and rethink how our society functions and how people Mm -hmm. are able to support themselves yeah and the concept that you mentioned about the teacher having a stake in like the how their students perform 
is remind me of a concept called skin in the game that is coined i mean so there is this guy that um my husband is also fond of his name is nasim nicholas talib he's a very cool guy he's a mathematician but he he does he did a lot of books on like statistics and probability and related to social issues so he has a term for skin in the game and he says that what we lack today is people um that who are in charge of making the decisions they lack they don't have any skin in the game like the teachers they don't have they might not have any like uh, skin in the game of like how their students might perform later in life but if we make a system in a way that uh, the teachers for example salary is directly impacted by the uh, by the uh, like let's say the jobs that her pa- uh, her past students can get then the teacher tries to do a better job to teach those students so maybe the teacher is not the best example because we know already that the teachers are doing a great job in this country and they are not paying enough but yeah example- but that but imagine what they would be with the incentive yeah. you know without you know the worry about whatever they have to worry about now i'm mm-hmm. not educated on the subject mm-hmm. um but yeah i think that profoundly changes things and it doesn't mean like i am like i First of all, I don't even know what the word socialism means or anything like that. So I don't know how I'm coming across because I think like my ideology was always like, you know, thinking capitalism, macroeconomics and things like that. But I'm thinking about it right now. And this is I don't know. I think I, I hit like a, a, a pothole. I was going somewhere and then <laughs> like the car changed tra- tra- directories and my rear view mirror is foggy. Um kinskin in the game right so the incentive structure right so you were mm-hmm. kinskin in the game incentive structure so i'm i don't even know what socialism means ah okay we're back on track back on the highway um i st- but people's like pushback to that is well then you, when you if you alleviate or relieve the pressure of competition then you ruin like innovation right but I had like a profound thing stumbling across master chef Australia and comparing it to master chef America in the American version. They give opportunities to fuck other contestants, right? In this, uh, newest season of master chef Australia, they just want to make it like they have this, this thing going on, this tribal thing of, they want to have like the best show ever. So as a group, you have people going, oh, you don't know a custard recipe while they're competing against each other, giving them a custard recipe to help them out. The Mm -hmm. very person that they're, you know, like competing against. Mm -hmm. And so I think you can still have competition if we can just somehow reframe it from a you versus me versus uh, and instead of that, have a we versus a goal. Mm -hmm. Bolstering everyone together. Right, right. Right. Which, you know, I know it sounds so fucking sweet and honey or stevia or whatever you use to swing your shit. But I mean, but, I mean, it's better than like tearing, tearing other people down. Yeah. And it's better than turning people against each other and the whole idea of us versus them. And I don't know, a lot of other similar shits right. like xenophobia and... Yeah, so given, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, imagine where, like, like I gain prosperity based upon all the people, like, around me. I don't know what radius, but black, white, whatever, then I'm going to push for everyone. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because it, Mm -hmm. you know, directly, you know, affects me. And I don't know what the arguments are on this, on the crazy side. Um, But, yeah. Anyways, I like I I don't have enough going on in here to offer any more but suggestions. You, you brought very good points. Like and again, you know, we are not in the position to bring necessarily any solutions to the table. We just like seeing, we just seeing, and based on our own experience, that if the environment would be more collaborative rather than competitive, necessarily, um, everyone can prosper. 
and this is something that at least I ex- I have the experience of in like such a stupid thing as a board game that we used to play with our friends every week. So there Scrabble? Are, no, it's just like Monopoly. No, it's the game called Seven Wonders. Sarah oh, knows. guess that. Sarah knows that. So that's my favorite it's, game. I missed it. And every time, so there are cards. So there, there are different strategies that you can um, get during the game, but there are certain cards that allow you to sabotage other people's like uh, hands or, um, you know, basically uh, r- damage other people's. What by is it called again? Seven, seven, seven wonders. wonders. So every, I have to say this. Every time I had the strategy to sabotage other people, I got the worst result, you know? So, and every time else that I try to play it like a normal, uh, really, I feel like whenever I don't play the sabotage cards, everyone else does, and then I get hit with all the negative points. But you know, you have to see it from their their perspective. Did they win the game necessarily? No, no. the winner is someone else who is usually investing in science or uh-huh. like, uh, you know, those blue cards that mm-hmm. are like yeah, civilian cards. cards, the yeah. point cards. So the sabotager. Is never going to win. That's it. That's it's just some... the military, by the way. They're the military cards. Oh shoot! You can win with the military cards. You can win. You can win with the military cards, but yeah. But yeah, even as in something just as stupid and simple as like the board game dynamic, uh, board game uh, uh, thing, you can see the the system of like this whole competitiveness and us versus them is not going to work for winning. It's not enough yeah. for winning. You need other strategies. And I think us coming to this realization that at the end of the day, we should help each other to elevate. We should elevate each other regardless of our race, regardless of our uh, social class. If there is some such things like that, uh, if we help each other, everyone will be happy at the end of the day. And you might win the hand, you know? <laughs> yeah, and that's the thing, if we help each other, you know? And so how do we, how do we incentivize people to want to help each other is the, mm-hmm. is the question I'm still trying to, like, figure out. But mm-hmm. awesome, great. And so great movies. We had uh, Hollywood, and we also had... Um, Oh, no, my memory, my memory. I once memorized the periodic table in <laughs> in uh, in twenty minutes, and then now I can't remember something said twenty minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> so it was uh, Django Unchained, Hollywood, and then um, uh, dear, uh, dear, dear Madam, so dear close. people of whiteness, dear white people. <laughs> <laughs> ah, dear white people. Okay, great. Yes, you had. I have the Green Book or Green Book and Marshall and uh, Crash. And Crash. And Sarah, what did I have? Black Panther and Remember the Titans. Uh, I want And then I threw it. in uh, Watchmen. Oh, yeah. yeah. Watchmen, the recent one. Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. All right. Well, not very cool. The situation's fucked up. Someone's going to fucking cut this part uh, and just use it. <laughs> all right. Not all our mini, mini fans. <laughs> yeah, I can't believe there was uh, this revelation that one of them is, uh, sorry to put you on the spot, yes, but, or I'm not, yes, yeah, Sarah, but one of the people that listens is, is your mom. Yeah, is she that true? She does. Uh, I'm she plays it while I'm in hearing distance and I'm like, don't play that when I'm around. <laughs> uh, I'm so sorry for my language. Uh, I just wanted to address. Oh, yeah. <laughs> nice. But you know what? Every time I hear myself, uh, either it's Naveed playing, or my husband is playing the video, uh, our podcast, or either it's our roommates, I will be so happy. And I, you know what is the first words coming out of my mouth would be? It would be like, oh, I'm talking so great. It was wait what? <laughs> no, basically, um, uh, I was about to say that every sorry, time sorry. I he- every time I hear myself speaking, I will be like, "Oh, I'm talking really good. I'm really proud of myself." This is what you say? 
Yes. This oh, is what you think? That's, that's yes. Oh. Sometimes when <laughs> when I when I see them like playing. I wish I had your confidence. Yes, every every time I hear like mine. a half a second of my voice, I'm like, ugh. Like I literally make that reaction. I do too. This oh. is why I'm like. Don't make me listen to that. <laughs> yeah, we, we have many. <laughs> Meanwhile, cut to Yaz. Hell yeah, my voice rocks. <laughs> my voice rocks. <laughs> Yassi's confidence. No, it's just because that generally I think that, oh, I have such a terrible voice. But when I hear it back, I would be like, oh, it's not as bad as I think. Oh, no. So see, I rock. See, I'm completely the opposite of you. I think I have a magnificent voice until I hear audio evidence. <laughs> and that's why I want to shut it off because it's contrary, contrary to what I actually believe. You know what? If you want to believe my roommates. I always think I'm. Uh, uh, you have I, the best I think voice. I sound good. And then I think I'm eloquent. And then I, I hear like playback of. <laughs> even something from last week so there's no improvement because i'll play it and i'm like why you say um so much like i think i'm eloquent but really i just say um 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 no <laughs> um that's okay we know we know that we still have a lot of place it's, for improvement it's gradual I'm just kidding. I'm the shit. Uh, <laughs> you are so good. You uh, rock. We rock. <laughs> you know? And black lives matter. No. Well, seriously. Uh, yes. I feel like we were so jokey-jokey at the end, and then we threw that in there, and I don't want to, like... <laughs> I don't want to just jump on that and feel like like joking, jokey about it. Yes, black, it's not something Black do. lives do matter. Uh, mm -hmm. I think, you know, uh, I think... <sighs> fuck. I don't know what to think. This world's fucked up. Um, but anyways, yeah. I hope you guys are doing better. Let's say bye. Yep. Yep. Please feel free to like and subscribe. Ask these people. Yeah, hit yeah. that button. We want to hear from you. It's so easy. Mm -hmm. And you will not get disappointed. Yes. Please cut that last part. Yeah.